Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, and today we will be profiling three of the largest Korean breweries, which produce five different brands of beer. Height, OB, Terra, Cass, and Cloud. Oh, and just so we're clear, when I refer to Korea, I'm referring to South Korea, aka True Korea or Best Korea. So yeah, take that, North Korea. So these companies are the largest beer breweries in South Korea, and they produce really sort of the types of beer that you're gonna be able to actually find, assuming you live outside of South Korea, in sort of a you know K-Town or, or something like that. And uh, Korean viewers, if you want to know what some random white guy thinks about your major beer breweries, uh, please keep watching. Hyatt originally started as the Choswon Beer Corporation in 1933, making it one of the oldest breweries in all of Korea. And not only is it one of the oldest breweries, it was also the first company to start exporting beer out of Korea in 1962. Now, Height Beer as we know it today was only launched in 1993. Why is this important? Well, Height Beer is the best-selling single brand of beer in South Korea and pretty much has been since the kind of early 2000s. For a beer that ended up taking the country by storm, at least in my opinion, a 1993 launch is pretty recent. Just under about a quarter of all beer consumed in South Korea actually is Height. I mean, you could almost think about it this way. If one were outside of the States and were to associate a beer like, I don't know, Budweiser with the United States. One could do very much the same thing with Height to South Korea and see it as sort of a shorthand for the beer from that country. It's actually kind of interesting using that comparison because Height was itself based on sort of American mass-produced lagers like Budweiser, which use rice in the brewing process, something that Height does as well. However, though, while Height is still the number one best-selling beer in South Korea, its market share has been slipping a little bit in recent years, partly because of increasing competition from other breweries, which we will talk about in a minute. However, Height may have a new secret weapon in the form of Terra, which is, as of right now, the fastest selling beer in all of Korea. Height is based in Seoul and is part of Height Jinro, which formed in 2006 when Height purchased the company Jinro, which was up to that point sort of a major soju producer. While I've never been to South Korea and I'd love to go at some point, ideally with Korean friends, and my understanding is you can pretty much find Height anywhere. It is a completely ubiquitous beer in the country. And certainly from the K-Towns that I've been to in the United States, that's very much the case. You can find Height in any sort of convenience store, grocery store, and a KBBQ place. And for those of you who are not familiar with the magic that is Korean barbecue, all I can say is you should read up on it, get your friends together, depending on what time zone you're in, and go out and have yourself some grilled meat. You will not regret it. Though, I mean, I suppose if you're vegetarian, it might be a little tricky. I suppose you could just like snack on the banchan or something, but that just seems a little bit uh, less fun. Anyway, I would also be remiss to not mention StarCraft since we are discussing South Korea. And indeed, up until 2011, Height was a sponsor of a South Korean professional StarCraft team, Height Entus, which I think makes it the first brewery that I'm aware of to have done a sponsorship deal in the world of sort of professional video games or uh, esports as they're, as they're officially called. For those of you who don't know, StarCraft is a strategy computer game series launched in the late 1990s with installments that go through sort of the, the 2010s and it eventually ended up becoming sort of a national phenomenon in uh, South Korea and still is. It's also a game that I logged uh, plenty of hours in my younger years playing both StarCraft 1 and 2, though sadly no longer, but uh, not because of any lack of interest. Now from the start, OB was founded as a subsidiary of the Dunsan Corporation, which is a huge South Korean multinational that specializes in stuff like heavy equipment manufacturing. This is probably the first situation I've heard of where a brewery was started you know, from day one as a, as a subsidiary of a company that is totally not at all in the world of beer production. I guess the thought must have been something like, we build power plants, engines, and heavy construction equipment. Let's make some beer while we're at it. It's almost like a reverse San Miguel Kirin situation, which if you didn't see those episodes, uh, basically, those companies made a ton of money first in the world of beer and then eventually expanded into sort of other non-beer related industries. Supposedly, OB may have had its origins in a Korean brewery that had started in the 1920s, back when Korea was actually a colony of Japan. But really, OB as we know it today began in 1952 when it was incorporated as sort of part of this conglomerate. And the company was originally actually called the Oriental Brewery, which, uh, yeah, let's just say in the modern world, I can see why they changed their name. They haven't actually legally changed the name. It's just that OB is the name that the company sort of does business by around the world. And that's kind of the brand that you'll see on, on bottles and, and whatnot. But um, you know, either way, um, I'm sticking with OB. We're, we're gonna be calling it OB going forward. Now in 1999, on behalf of its parent company, 
OB actually acquired the South Korean brewery Cass, which up to that point in time was a very large brewery and was pretty prolific. It, it achieved really its peak of popularity in sort of the mid to late 1970s before eventually losing market share to hype starting in sort of the 1990s. But then actually OB itself was incidentally um, acquired and changed hands a number of times in the early 2000s. And it, as of right now, is actually an AB InBev subsidiary. Now of all of the companies discussed here, OB is definitely the one that has sort of the widest variety of beer it produces, mostly under either the OB or CAS heading. And having so many brands is a serious plus. OB is the largest brewery in South Korea by market share. And if you count all of the different brands that the company manufactures, approximately 50% of all beer consumed in Korea is OB beer. Cloud is the most recently launched of the beers discussed here. Cloud is manufactured by Lottie Liquor, which if you couldn't guess from the name, Yep, is a distillery that specializes in the production of soju. And one of their main soju brands is something called Chungchurong, which a Korean American friend of mine from a few years ago described to me as meaning something like another one. Though I understand that the official translation is something closer to like the first time. And Chungchurong is actually one of the most popular brands of soju in all of Korea, competing with the likes of soju brands like Chamisuot, which incidentally is actually produced by Haijin Ro. After decades of enjoying success as eventually the second largest producer of soju in South Korea, the owners of Lottie Liquor decided it was time to get in on the beer game. So in 2014, they launched Cloud. They named the beer Cloud with a K because the K was basically to represent Korea and the Cloud was to reference beer foam. And one could describe beer foam as being cloud-like. And actually when the beer launched, it was such a success that there was actually a massive shortage of it shortly after launch. Korean viewers, is this true? And if so, what were you doing during the great cloud shortage of 2014? Or 2015, presumably? Unsurprisingly, given that this is the most recently launched of the beers discussed here, Cloud has the smallest market share currently. But as of right now, about 4% of all beer consumed in Korea is Cloud, which I would say given the recent launch is not too shabby. And it's also picking up market share every year that goes by. Because basically what previously was just a duel, more or less, between Haijin Ro and OB for complete dominance of the South Korean domestic beer market has now turned into something of a three-way battle for market share now that Lottie Liquor's champion fighter Cloud has joined the fray. As is the case in a number of other Southeast Asian and East Asian nations, beer is very much a part of Korean culture, despite being in the scheme of things a fairly new beverage to have been introduced into the country. By most estimates, beer was not really being widely consumed in Korea until at the absolute earliest, maybe the 1930s, but even that's a little iffy and it probably is something more like the post-war 1950s. So given that, about 40% of all alcohol consumed in Korea is beer, with stuff like soju, stronger spirits, and wine making up the rest. Now, if you kind of couldn't already tell Hell, there's sort of a pattern here with, with Korean breweries where these breweries are really more like integrated alcoholic beverage producers. What you have is really beer and soju and other spirits being produced often alongside each other. Maybe not literally at the same plant, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Compared to other cultures where, you know, beer and spirits are seen as very much separate industries or at least separate sub-industries in the world of sort of alcohol production, you know, maybe a brewery might also make cider as well, but that's kind of about it. In South Korea, however, this idea of opening up shop and pretty much from day one producing beer and soju and whatever else at sort of the same site or at least under the same immediate company heading is very much something that people in the country do. Because remember, while beer is very much a part of South Korean culture, Soju is not to be ignored, and we could really describe it as the national beverage. I mean, to put it another way, soju is kind of a big deal in Korea would be like saying, the Czechs, Germans, Brits, and Irish enjoy a beer now and then. And also, I sort of mentioned this in the Japan episode, but um, like in Japan, South Korean beer culture has historically been, and really still is, dominated by these few large domestic beer producers. So while there is a craft beer scene in Korea, it's still very much in its infancy. But I would like to see how it kind of grows in the coming years. Now, all of these beers are gonna be pretty similar to one another. They're pale lagers with, at the minimum, the basic ingredients of water, hops, malt, and yeast. But to talk about the differences, height. Height is made additionally with rice and cornstarch. It's supposedly a little bit heavier on the malt rather than the hops, but I'd imagine it's gonna be pretty basic. OB Golden Lager. This is also made with rice and cornstarch. Unlike height, however, it leans a little bit heavier on the hops rather than malt. Terra. Launched in 2019 by Height Jin Ro, to say that this beer is gaining in popularity in South Korea is is something of an understatement. As far as I'm aware, as of the making of this video, and please feel free to fact check me on this, it is the fastest growing beer in terms of popularity 
in all of South Korea. And it also only started rolling out in a lot of other countries in 2021. It's marketed as a sort of clean lager in that it's sort of ecologically friendly and it's made with naturally farmed barley and hops from Australia, actually of all places, Cass. A different beer manufactured by OB, this one has cornstarch in it and is described as being sort of soft. So I'd imagine it's gonna be sort of heavier on malt, less so on hops. Cloud. This is the one beer actually made without rice and or cornstarch in it. It's marketed as a German style lager, there you go, more German influence, and an all malt beer. Meaning aside from the four basic ingredients, there's sort of nothing else in the beer. No other sort of starch additives like, well, rice or cornstarch. 